This is your Barbados Today Morning News Update for Wednesday, July 10th, 2019. Thanks for joining us. I'm Carol Williams. A plea for closure. The family of a murdered man who was hearing impaired and had difficulty speaking is struggling to make sense of his death. Rupert Patrick Stout was killed early Saturday morning after being stabbed and beaten by a group of men. He was pronounced dead at hospital. That one man has been charged for his murder is of little comfort to his family. Terry Stout, his youngest brother, says his killing was senseless and is angry that onlookers recorded the incident on their phones rather than going to the aid of his brother. You do good and what comes out of this good that you're doing? You end up dying, you end up bearing a brother, you end up bearing a sister, a loved one. It is unjust. Something needs to be done that, that people like me and my father, my mother, my other brother that grieving can have some sorrow resolution, some sort of peace, some sort of something. I don't know how to function anymore. I can't think straight, I can't eat, I can't sleep. This is, I don't know what to say. I lost for words in, in, in every aspect. It's overbearing. It's, it's overbearing. Stout remembers his older brother as someone who was well known, loving, and didn't let his disabilities slow him down. You will hear people come and say in, in instances like this, oh, he was a good boy. And then turned to be bare lives. That he was harder than I, but nobody can ask us about Patrick. Mm -hmm. I tell you, when you see this funeral take place in the monk of people that come there to mourn for Patrick, you give me a testimony of how this man lived a life. I tell you, he was deaf, he couldn't hear, he couldn't speak, but you want you will look at him and cannot tell that he's a deaf person. He can sit down here and understand everything we say. Patrick will be in his room when people will come to this house. Patrick ain't here now, but Patrick out on peak because he knows something. Yeah, it's just something, I don't know, he lost his speech and his hearing, but he, he gained in other areas. Mm -hmm. And Iman was so loving. I don't know how because he never had children, but Iman was so loving. Good anyway, and everybody saying, oh, he always hugging you. He always kissing you. You want to do something for you. Mm. That was Patrick. About half of the residents in the pine housing units would have to be moved to properly evaluate wells in the area. That's the conclusion of Minister of Housing George Payne, who has laid the blame for the poor maintenance of the wells squarely at the feet of the former administration. He was commenting on the matter in Parliament days after a teen died after falling into a 100-foot well. During the debate on the vesting and disposal of Crown lands at Colleton Plantation St. Lucie yesterday, Minister Payne noted that the administration is facing a serious dilemma and described the situation in the Pine as serious. It, it is not a case where tomorrow you could actually, especially those houses that are, those areas that are built on, 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 on wells, um, that you could actually um, get those problems rectified. But in many cases we may have, we may have to, to shift a number of those persons, or I would say it, it, the, the solution, the real solution to the problems in the pine is one that we cannot do at this particular point in time. It would involve a complete re relocation of about 50% of the, the, the residents in the pine, so that we would then be able to do the, um, a, proper, um, a proper inspection, a proper, to have a proper inspectorate. Um, those, um, the, the, the regulations um, is another matter. So far, so good. Minister of Health, Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Bostick says residents are responding well to the 24-hour service at the Winston Scott Polyclinic. The system took effect July 1st after some delay. The minister is expecting the numbers to increase as persons become more familiar with the new service. For the first three days, for example, we would have averaged about 95 patients per day. And during the graveyard shift or the night shift at the moment, for those three days, about nine or ten persons would have visited the polyclinic. And we expect that these numbers would increase as time goes on. Uh, especially as people, first of all, get to understand exactly what services are being offered there. And then the one little issue we had, which was the transportation issue between QEH and the polyclinic, once that has been rectified, and I'm told that that should be sorted out shortly, then the QEH would then be able to send persons from accident and emergency to Winston Scott, especially out of hours. There's regional and international news after this short break.
Barbados Today, news you can trust. In the Bahamas, the man believed to be responsible for the recent mass shooting that left 14 people injured is behind bars after he was formally charged in court yesterday. We get more from Eyewitness News. 26-year-old Jeremiah Andrew, seen in the navy blue hoodie, was brought before Magistrate Darren's Roll Davis in court today to answer to a litany of charges. Related to that mass Montel Heights shooting last weekend that left 10 persons injured, including a 10-year-old. Andrew faces 11 counts of possession of firearm with the intent to endanger life. Police allege that Andrew was in possession of a 9mm pistol on Sunday, the 30th of June, with the intention to endanger the lives of Destiny Oliver, Kimberly Johnson, Sean L. Purnell, Shanice McKenzie, Nikita Pratt, Shakara Haven, Felicia Brown, Gabrielle Strawn, Toriano Johnson, Rico McIntosh, and Aisha Johnson. Andrews pleaded not guilty to all charges. Bail was denied and he was remanded to the Bahamas Department of Corrections until September 10th when he is expected to return to court. And finally, internationally, Paris yesterday declared a climate emergency following similar moves by other cities and national parliaments. We get the details from France 24. In New York City and some 650 other towns around the world, Paris has declared a so-called climate emergency. It's a symbolic measure to stress the fact that the French capital is still committed to fighting global warming, four years after the Paris Accords were signed. Two new measures were adopted during the Paris City Council. The French capital City Hall has vowed to create an interministerial working group on climate change, composed of scientists who will advise decision makers on upcoming environmental projects. It will also launch a climate academy with the aim of better educating the public about the issue. Ahead of municipal elections next year, the French capital socialist mayor Anne Hidalgo is seeking to boost her green credentials. This comes in the wake of other ambitious projects. The mayor has already significantly restricted traffic in the city center and has introduced emergency traffic bans during pollution peaks. More recently, Paris has also unveiled plans to create urban forests to improve air quality. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbetustoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as Crinply at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. I'm Carol Williams. Have a good day.